everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Everset Point here in Planet Zoo, where today we're going to be delving into the new conservation pack. There should be a video that got, went up before this one, uh, not sure if it's on the same day or the day before, uh, but I looked into the Siamang for the conservation pack as well. But this habitat I actually built before that one and um, I built this a couple days ago. Uh, right in the middle of a really bad illness. So if you haven't seen my other video, which I'm recording after this, so <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more. I will have talked a little bit more about being extremely ill the past week in that one. But while I was very ill, I thought I'd ease myself back into Planet Zoo with a much more chill habitat build. Nothing fancy at all. It's just a nice open area for some scimitar horned oryx. The scimitar horned oryx is a very, very tragically quite endangered animal because it is almost entirely extinct in the wild. Uh, it is entirely extinct in the wild, I should say. All wild populations right now are reintroduced, so there have been conservation efforts to get them back up to a breeding population and reintroduce back to the wild. I believe the country Chad is a, one of the biggest, um, if not the biggest, uh, like party responsible for this at the moment. Um, because scimitar horn oryx, of course, is from uh, that region of the world, it's from Central North-ish Africa. I'd say North Africa more than Central. It's because of, um, you know, it's a desert-dwelling animal. It's from those very, very hyper-arid regions. It's a beautiful animal. It's a very elegant-looking antelope, I'd say. Those horns especially look really, really beautiful, and they curve so, so elegantly. And you find them in both males and females, males having slightly large horns, but nowhere near the same kind of sexual dimorphism you'd see in kind of um, what you would expect to see in a lot of other antelope species, where you would see much bigger antlers or horns in the males. They're very, kind of, again, elegant is a great way to describe them because their patterns and their colours are nothing vibrant or, you know, super, super flashy or anything like that, but they they really are quite beautiful in their own way. They've got this nice tan color with some with these kind of sandy, sandy coats on them, and they're just beautiful animals, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, for this habitat, nothing too fancy at all. I wanted a nice rock wall to kind of harken to that arid environment that they're from. A nice kind of sandy, soily uh, substrate for most of the habitat, with a little bit of grass here and there, and. As far as anything else goes, really there's not much else. With ungulates, there's not an awful lot you can do anyway, so put in a nice little uh, shelter in the back. You'll see me do a little bit of work on that in a bit. Uh, standard fencing here. As you can tell, I was so ill and I really just could not put in an awful lot of work into the habitat, but I really wanted to play the game and I really wanted to, you know, get to grip for the conservation pack and really start looking at some of the animals. So I decided to put something together that's very, very simple. What I did have a lot of fun with, and you're going to have uh, see me start doing this in a bit, is I really, really enjoy the new foliage in the pack. You all have seen this in the Siamang habitat as well. The foliage in this pack is amazing. There's some really beautiful new trees. Um, but more than that, lots and lots of beautiful ground cover. We don't actually use an awful lot of that here. Now we do use, uh, I believe, one of the new trees, the Impingo tree. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but yeah, that tree is really nice. There's a few others which are really good, uh, which I can't remember the name of, unfortunately, but, but they're all really lovely. Spongy did some fantastic work with the foliage in this pack. And the animals too, of course, but, but really, yeah, the foliage, I think, is probably the best foliage out of any of the DLC packs so far. Because they do often come with foliage, and just not much of it, and it, it rarely, like, makes an awful lot of um, difference. Some of the key standouts from the DLC packs that I can think of. Uh, I believe Giant Rhubarb came with the was it the aquatic pack. That was a really cool plant that I love. Drin Grass was amazing. It's great for making grasses. The aquatic pack actually had a lot of nice foliage. The, you know, the underwater plants, that was really nice. Um, the Africa pack had great foliage. Euro pack had a couple nice things. It had um, the cork oak tree and the London plane trees are really nice. Mm. But yeah, before that, you know, there's, there's a few others here and there, but nothing, I think this pack definitely has some of the, the best foliage so far. Really big fan of all of it in the game. The, as far as the building sets go, nothing themed, uh, besides the science and stuff itself, uh, the science of the animals themselves. 
but we have a lot of really brilliant new kind of more backstage focused cons uh, construction items some even more I would say kind of like ramshackle or not even ramshackle some of them look really modern and sleek actually like these flat pieces here but they, they all fit really well really big fan of all of them um, I like that we got some new kind of green roofing pieces as well you see me use some of that here today I've been such a big fan of these mural pieces recently, I just think they work really well for roofing. Yeah, I'm gonna make a quick, like I said, just a quick uh, shelter structure for the Scimitar Horned Oryx. For them to chill out and for them to hang out in. Uh, I think it ends up looking pretty, pretty chill. If you do ask, uh, if I do say so myself. <laughs> As you can maybe hear from my voice, I am not 100% recovered by any means. I'm still a little bit ill. I, I really don't know what on earth it was. It definitely wasn't COVID, thankfully. Um, but yeah, no clue, no clue what it was. It was during a hugely, hugely busy week of work too, which was just not a great time for me to be ill. Um, and of course the pack dropped at the same time, so ah, yeah, just not not great timing. Um, also, I've been, uh, of course, playing Jurassic World Evolution. We'll be uploading more videos of that soon as well. Video's not gonna go quite back to how often I used to upload them, but I do want to try and still upload a reasonable amount. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get some more going and I won't be keeping you all waiting for as long as you, you have been. But thanks as always for being so patient with me, for supporting the channel and for you know watching the videos. It really does, it means so much. Uh, but yeah, nothing much else to say about this habitat. We actually haven't even gotten started with the, the foliage but I've already spoken about that. But yeah, the, the pack itself is really great. I really like the fact that it is so conservation focused. One of the great things about zoo simulation games is that they really have that platform to be able to uh, kind of teach people about conservation issues. And the animal selection here is really great because you see a variety of different kind of conservation situations that these animals are in. For example, um, like the Scimitar Horned Oryx, of course, has this reintroduction program going. And then there's animals like the axolotl, which is of course is our exhibit animal. And with that, it's, you know, it's um, basically nearly extinct in the wild because it's only found in a select group of small uh, lakes in Mexico, I believe. Uh, might even just be the one lake, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it's, it's just found in such few locations in the world. But in captivity, they're everywhere. You see them all over the place, um, not just in zoos, but as pets and stuff like that. So. It's really, you know, it's, it's good to put out awareness that just because you see an animal everywhere, for example, like the axolotl, doesn't mean it's not threatened in the wild. So little things like that, I think, are really, really, they go a long distance. And of course, the Zoopedia entries are really informative as always. So I, I think that, you know, having conservation focus pack is really good. In fact, back in the day in Zoo Tycoon 2, I believe my favorite DLC was the, was it the Endangered Species pack? I think so. I think that I would say that's my favorite DLC for sure. Um, and we did actually get the Scimitar Horn Oryx in that one. And if I'm not mistaken, we also got the Shavalski's Wild Horse. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. We'll do a video on the Shavalski's Wild Horse sometime soon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, uh, I really liked that pack back in the day in Tekken 2. And those animals are really good, and of course it was nice to have a conservation focus pack then too. But here I'm building a quick planter for some of these new fancy trees. I looked up zoos in the UK because that's kind of where Avocet Point is meant to be set. And I looked at like what plants you can kind of feasibly get away with. And I put in some palm trees, which I know don't really look very UK. But the fact, like these ones here, but the thing is I've seen them in the UK, like just used as like, you know, decoration and, and uh, here and there. So. I thought it worked and it looks really nice so we end up using that. That's the umpingo tree. Really really like that tree as well. Um, but yeah I can't remember where I was going with that, the endangered species thing. I was going to mention something but can't remember. But yeah, uh, loving the pack, loving the focus on conservation. Really really great work here. And um, oh yeah there's me adding in those ponytail palms which I am obsessed with. Really like how that rock formation looks by the way. It's just a blueprint from the game. I think that Frontier put that in there. Uh, I think it's the Tiger Rock Collection. Uh, really good. Just really nice to put in and then work around with some other rocks and stuff. Ends up looking really good. But yeah, uh, what else are we doing here? Nope, just a couple more plants here and there. That pingo tree is really, really nice. Um, and then here there's some like bushiness 
here and there and then we'll put in the sim to haunt works and of course we'll go to the cinematics after that ever since i had that huge computer issue about a month ago um it's been a bit of a pain because i lost a lot of uh files well not files i lost a lot of like project files in my video editing software which is kind of what i use to reference like what type of audio i use and like uh, what music and stuff that i put at the start of the video end of the video or so things so it's been a bit of a nightmare trying to figure out all that but all seems to be back in place now i so if the videos do feel a little bit different that's probably why it's just that i've got some you know like inconsistencies in the audio and stuff because i have just haven't been able to find the right one maybe but yeah that's it for today's uh video do let me know what you thought in the comments down below oh that's what i was gonna say you never set point the entire wetland section I scrapped. I wasn't happy with it. I'll go back and redo it at some point. I will go back to the wetland pack animals because I really, really like them. And I want to make habitat for them. But of course, this new DLC released and I haven't made that many videos. So, but, but slow down. But yes, we'll get back to that. Anyways, thanks so much for watching today's video. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Thanks as always for supporting. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.